I'm going to give you a quick synopsis about Passover. I'm going to give you a quick synopsis about Passover. Remember, it's found in Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. Everyone watch your children just for the next few moments. And the children will have something at the end of this service. In chapter 12, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, you shall take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And thou shalt take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And thou shalt eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, shall eat it. They shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. Did you hear what I said? With urgency. Eat it. We're going to have communion here in just a moment. And with urgency, we're going to eat it. Okay? For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, and God said, and when I see that blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. 430 years in bondage. Having children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, on and on. 430 years being slaves. 430 years in bondage. And oh, how they wanted to leave Egypt. God started a process for all humanity, and we call it Passover. You see, to get those Egyptians to let go of them, pain had to hit them. Judgment had to come. And God sent ten plagues. After those plagues, God spoke to Moses. He said, this is what we're going to do. I want you to tell all the people we're going to start something, and I want you to do it every generation. Every generation, teach your children, teach your grandchildren what's going to happen. And I want you to uh, rejoice every year. And this year, for the Jewish calendar, April 8th through April 16th. That was from this Wednesday, a few days ago, over to next Thursday. Okay? I want you to celebrate Passover. And there's some pertinent things I want to give to you. He told them, he said, I want you to get ready. I want you to go get you a lamb without a spot or a wrinkle. Now, if you're going to get a lamb for the sins of the world, God's only begotten Son became the Passover lamb. Say amen when you get ready. Okay? The Passover lamb had to be without spot, without wrinkle. It's amazing how the priest would look at the lamb and then say, if it was perfect, he would say, I find no fault. Well, I heard Pilate say that in the New Testament. I find no fault in this man, Jesus, the Passover lamb. Then they were to take it to their house, and they, were, they let it live for a few days. But in this situation, they, they had it, they killed it, <coughs> and when they killed it, they went through the blood. And then they were told 
We want you to take that blood and put it on the doorpost. Put it on the doorpost. Many years ago, I heard evangelists on radio say, buy you a blood sticker. I thought that was pretty funny. For $10, you could get you a blood sticker. I don't have a blood sticker at my house. I've got the precious blood of the Passover lamb. His name is Jesus, who became my faithful high priest, touched with the feeling of my infirmities. And I applied the blood on the doorpost of my heart by simply saying, Jesus, forgive me, come into my heart. Just that simple, not complicated. And so they applied that blood over the header of the door. You see, in Revelation it says, Jesus said, I am the door. Amen. I am the door. You can come through me. And then he said, I'll stand at the door and knock. If any man will open that door, I will come in. Oh, it's a beautiful thing when we talk about Passover and then the crucifixion and the resurrection because this is, should be our everyday life. Every day this should be our life. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he, uh, they would roast that lamb. They would roast. Jesus was roasted. Jesus was roasted on the cross. He suffered for you. He was covered with blood in the Passion of the Christ movie. There wasn't an inch on him that didn't have blood. Why? Because the lamb had to be roasted. It had to be covered with blood. God did not want to see any flesh. And so he was roasted and then they shared it with their neighbor. If you're born again and you're not sharing with your neighbor, it's getting real quiet. All I can hear is the cars now. You should share Jesus Christ because he that winneth souls is wise. Paul said, I'm a debtor to these people to tell them about the lamb. And then after they shared the lamb and Josephus said it covered about 15 people, one lamb. Then after that, he said, I want you, I think it was verse number 11. He said, I want you to get dressed up. I want you to get dressed up. Are you listening to me? I want you to dress up. I will tell you how you get dressed up. Get the righteousness of Christ covering your wretched, dirty, filthy, rotten sins. Get the sins out. Dress up. Get your shoes on. Amen. Get dressed up because it's right to reverence what I'm doing for you today. And so, get dressed up. And then he said, I want you to eat, but I don't want you to mess around. I want you with an urgency to eat what I've told you to eat. Eat of that lamb. Eat of that lamb. Eat of that lamb. Well, some people never take communion. About maybe every once a year or two or three. I believe it's all right to take the communion every day. How about, is that all right with y'all? It would be okay every day. It's the condition of the heart. Remembering. He wants us to remember. He wants us to remember. So God sent forth his own son to be that Passover lamb. And uh, he lived 33 years. And then he was taken to the cross. Now here's the story you remember. At the cross, uh, he gave his life for six hours between 9 and 3 o'clock. He was slapped. He was beaten. He, he had 39 stripes on his back for your healing. And uh, he suffered 13-inch long crucifixion nails in his hands and feet. And a crown of thorns from an Arabian novel bush pushed it to his brow. He was covered with blood. And he said, Father, if it be thy will that this cup pass from me, God, is there a better way? And Gethsemane he cried it. If there's a better way, make it happen. But on to the cross. Eli, Eli, Leba, Sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he hung on the cross. And then he had to put up with people like some of you put up with. Those that say there is no God. There is no Christ. There is no resurrection. Why, why do you go to church? Why do you go through all of this? We do it because we know that we know 
that the Son of God went to the cross. He took my place. He's my personal Savior. Without Him, I can't live. Without Him, I am nothing. Without Him, I died today. Had it not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be today? And he stayed on that cross, humiliated. The people came by a priest and said, If you're Christ, save yourself. Get out off that cross. Why don't you do something? You see, his pride was tested. What would you do to prove you were the Son of God? And yet Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I try to tell people that sometimes when they're going in a conflict at work or somewhere. Just remember, they don't really know you and they don't know the Savior in you. Go the extra mile. Go the extra mile. And then over there in the afternoon, he was so thirsty and he couldn't breathe. His lungs were collapsing and he would push up off that nail in his feet so his lungs could open up and he could breathe wounded wounded for me he was bruised for our iniquities he was chastised and it caused it it was the chastisement of my peace that was upon him he took it all with his stripes i'm healed today with his stripes you're healed today i said with his stripes you are healed today Wounded for me, wounded for me. In Gethsemane, he got up when they come to get him, and he said, Whom seek ye? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. Interpreted, I am the great I am. And he blew 600 soldiers down. They fell to the ground. Later on, in two places in the scripture, there was a little boy running around naked. He had a loincloth in his hand which meant when he was buried, he had no clothes on but just a loincloth. In two places in the scripture, soldiers tried to catch him, and he fled, fled for them. So somebody wonders, why is this guy running around? He evidently got up out of the grave. Well, guess where that was? He was down there by Gethsemane. There was a place for, to bury people. And so when Jesus said, I am he, the great I am, it evidently blew his tomb open and he was running around trying to find who set me free from death. My God, I'd be running right now if I had a place to run. Hallelujah. There's power. There's power in his name. There was power in his blood. And they took him off the cross at three when he said, it is finished. They had to hurry. Why? Because that thing called Passover I was talking to you about, it started on Friday evening at six o'clock. They had to get him off the cross and they had to get him into a tomb and they had to prepare him to lay in that tomb. And I want to tell you when they put him in that tomb, they put him in a power position. How many has ever been to a funeral before? How many has ever been to the graveyard service? You'll find that all the headstones are facing the east. Yes, they're facing the east. Out of the east comes a lightning bolt. That's when the Lord comes back out of the east to the west. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And what they do out there in the cemetery, they lay them down facing the east. And that's the reason why. Because when the Lord brings them up out of that grave, they want to see the Lord the first thing. The master, the savior, the blind eye healer, the limb straightener, the water walker, the grave robber. He's my healer. He's my great physician. He's my banker. He supplies all my needs. How many loves Jesus today? And on the third day, the resurrection power, the same spirit that dwelleth in you or in Christ uh, dwelleth in you and it's going to quicken you. One of these days, we're not going to look for another sign. We're going to listen for a sound. What is it going to be? Behold, the Lord cometh. Behold, the Lord cometh. I like that word behold. It means wow, wow. They didn't know how to be cool like you and me. Amen. They didn't know how to say, wow, the ladies just got there. Jesus is gone. Behold, 
Well, what they were saying was, wow, he's risen, he's risen, he's risen. Where is he, somebody? He's in my heart. Where is he, somebody? He's in my heart. Holy Ghost, help us today. Do you know Jesus? No, no, I don't want to know you know about him. But do you know him? Well, me and the man's got a thing. No, you don't know him. If you know him, you probably cry. If you know him, you probably worship him. For sure. You know who he is. He's the God the Word who made it all. Flipped the stars into by his fingertips. Just threw them into place. He's the God who made you before the world was. And then there was a time to be born. And there was a time to die. God is real. I've asked a friend of mine that showed up this morning. That pastors right across the freeway here. He has now gone out to full time missionary work. He has spent his life helping hurting people. I'm going to ask Jerry Davis to come up. There might be a sinner here today. And I want you to get it right today. Because any day now, the rapture may take place. And if it takes place, you need to know this risen Savior. Come, Jerry. Thank you, Pastor Phil. I'll tell you what. If you are listening to this message, if you listen to this message today, there's no way that you're right now compelled 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 by the anointing of the holy spirit that tug on your heart that thing that's reaching out and getting inside of you saying i need to act on what i just heard see if you don't act on what you've heard it didn't mean anything you can tell somebody and teach somebody something all day long but if they don't act on it that means they didn't really believe it the only way that you can act on what you've heard is to do what he said and say you know what I don't just believe in Jesus. I don't just have a knowledge of Jesus. I am going to act on what Pastor Phil said. And I'm going to give my heart and my life and my service to this King. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. And the question is, are you going to be alive with Him for all of eternity? Because you have a choice to make. You have a choice to to make when you've heard once you've heard the gospel you have a decision you have a choice and you couldn't hear it any better or any clearer than my friend pastor phil just laid it out this morning and you have a response you if you're out there and you say yeah well i do know jesus i've heard of jesus then you have a responsibility to share that good news with somebody else see getting saved isn't just for you hearing the gospel isn't just for you Hearing the gospel is so you can... The only reason we're still... The only reason Jesus hasn't come back is because He knows there are people out there who are still willing to say yes if they hear. Let's deal with you first. You can come to a drive-up. I was so excited when I found out Pastor Phil was having drive-up church. I couldn't wait to get here. I got up, got my best on, got dressed. We have several churches that meet at Embassy, and they had a lot of online services. And, and I was like, you know what? And I, I've already preached this morning online, but I was so excited. I said, I'm going to church. I, I, I don't like it when somebody says you can have drive-up liquor stores, but you can't have a drive-up service. That just hits me and rubs me the wrong way. I said, I'm going to church. I don't care. I, I hope it hair lips the devil. But you are now ready. You've heard the word. What will you do with it? I'm going to give an opportunity. I'm going to pray a prayer. And I know many people are watching online. I know people are listening. And I know people are in that stage. There's a lot of people right now who are afraid. There's a lot of people who are afraid. They don't know. You know what? I haven't been afraid one time. Not one time. Not once have I been afraid because I read the back of the book, Pastor Phil. We win. We win. I read the back of the book. I know how the outcome is going to be. I know what it's going to be. Even if you killed my body, I still win. I'm alive in Christ. I want you to be alive in Christ. On this resurrection day, it's time for you to have a resurrection if you don't have one. It's time for you to have a resurrection. So I want to challenge you now. I want you to pray a prayer with me. And I want that prayer to ring 
not only in your heart, your soul, your mind, your body. I want it to ring everywhere you go today. I want you to share this. If you're videotaping, if you get Pastor Phil's Facebook, share it with everybody you know. And let's share that there is good news in the middle of a bad news situation. There's good news in the middle of a bad news situation. There's good news in the middle of a bad news situation. The bad news, there is a hell. But I don't, the good news, I don't have to go. And I'm not. I'm not. The bad news is there's a coronavirus, COVID-19. I know, I have friends, personal friends. I have pastor friends. And throughout hot spots around the country. New York, California, uh, 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 Florida, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. I have pastor friends that have COVID ID. 19. But they're overcoming. They're overcoming. Every one of them are overcoming. Not one of them has died. They're overcoming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. On the way to the cross to take that horrible death penalty, Jesus stopped and took a beating for the healing of everyone who comes to Christ. Father, in the name, I want you to pray this with me. I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to pray it out loud. Sitting out in your cars, wherever you are, I want you to pray this prayer. Oh, God. Say it out loud like you mean it. Oh, God. Without you, I'm lost. But I don't want to be lost. I need you, Jesus. And on this resurrection day, I ask you to give me a resurrection, Lord. In my mind. In my heart, in my spirit, resurrect me from my sin. Resurrect me from death into life. And make me a witness, Lord God. Use me as a tool. Use my my bad testimony and turn it into a good testimony. For the glory of God. I'm yours forever, Jesus. Everything I am, everything I have, and everything I'll ever be, I give it to you. It's yours, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now let's pray. Let's pray the healing virtue, the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's pray the blood of Jesus. You know, I, I, I don't know how to explain how that Easter day, in the, in the day that we're celebrating, is also where the peak of the death started ending. <laughs> the peak of the death of this virus started ending on Easter day. And resurrection is coming right up through the scene. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stretch our hands out to our neighbors, Lord God. We ask that in the midst of this crisis, they realize crisis time is God time. All throughout, to the left of us in the neighborhoods, to the right of us in the neighborhoods, and then as it stretches out mile by mile by mile by mile, we ask, that the death angel pass over with the blood of Christ and that those who have been iffy about you now get sincere and realize I need this Jesus I need a church like Triumph Church I need brothers and sisters in Christ I need to become a disciple and I need to share that good news Father we ask that your healing virtue just start to flow let it start right here at Triumph Church and like, like a rock that falls into the water just begin to emanate from this point all throughout this area and this region and into our entire nation. Father, we pray for our leadership of our country. We thank you, Father God, that even our president is recognizing nothing without God is possible, but with God all things are possible. We thank you, Father, that our entire government submits to you. We thank you, Father God, that our governors submit to you. We thank you, Father God, that our mayors submit to you. We thank you, Father God, that our schools submit to you. We thank you, Father God, that every person on every job submits to you and your will in this land. In Jesus' name, Father God, let a revival come. 
Let a revival sweep over our nation. Crisis time is God time. And we acknowledge you, Jesus. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we have nothing. And so we bow our knee before you, mighty God. We bow our knee before you. Healer, healer, healer of our heart. Healer, healer, healer of our body. Healer of our souls. Healing virtue flow. Healing virtue flow. Healing virtue flow throughout our land. We pray especially for our household of faith, Lord God. Across this country, my, the, the hot spots, the hot spots, we pray for the household of faith. Let them walk through this thing in miraculous testimony as they are doing and be a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ and His virtue and His grace. And we praise you for it in Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Jesus' precious name. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. And amen. amen. Thank, you. Thank you, Brother David, so much. I need my grandchildren to come here right quick. My grandkids. Hurry, hurry, hurry. My grandkids. Do I have grandkids here? I have one, two, three. Four. Because he lives. How sweet to hold my little grandbabies mm, and feel the pride and the joy. But greater still, my little grandbabies, they know the Lord. And you know what? Jesus is their Lord. And they're going to live forever and forever. And how do you say that, Pastor Phil? Because he lives. One more time, everybody sing with me. Because he lives. Because he lives. communion now you're not going to preach Jace you're not well maybe Sunday yes you have your communion you people that are standing right there are you, do you have your communion right now is everybody ready with his disciples and when he met with those disciples brother Byron when he met with those disciples he had bread and he had the wine and he said to them take of this bread which is my body which is given to you today would you partake of the bread sister Mattis would you help me Thank you, Father, for what you did. Forgiven your only begotten. Thank you, Lord, for paying the price at the cross. We take this not to pursue something to eat. We just want to 
enjoy you and believe in you and openly, openly profess you before men. Thank you for your body. He said, take of the, the drink, which is my blood, the New Testament. It's a better way. And you believe in that blood, would you show and profess you believe by taking the drink at this time? Somebody praise him and thank him. Hallelujah, Lord. Above all. Above all. Sing that chorus, Cindy. Crucified. Crucified. 